Brothers and sisters in the Lord, today I want to talk to you about a reality that is often overlooked, but can have a devastating impact on our daily lives. The subtle action of the devil. He is cunning and insinuates himself into our lives in ways that we often do not immediately recognize. We should not expect to see him in person, nor through demonic possessions or spiritistic visions. The devil is adept at acting through seemingly innocent situations, slipping into the folds of our daily lives. But do not fear, because with the light of faith and the strength of prayer, we can recognize and resist his deceptions. Let us understand together how we can recognize his action in our daily lives. Satan, the deceiver, finds fertile ground in our hearts when we let feelings like envy and jealousy take over. These feelings poison the soul, distort the perception of reality, and lead us away from the path of the Lord. Let us remember the words of James 3.16. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Envy is one of the evil one's favorite tools, a seed he plants in weak hearts to grow divisions and discord. His own fall was caused by envy towards the greatness of God, a feeling that led him to rebellion and his expulsion from paradise. When we find ourselves the object of envy or jealousy, we must remember not to be swayed by it. Jesus teaches us to be humble and aware that everything we have is a gift from God. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Prayer is our most powerful weapon against envy and jealousy. Saint Benedict of Nursia urges us to defend ourselves from evil through prayer, active charity, absolute fidelity to the Lord, and complete trust in Him. Living a holy life, practicing justice, and performing works of mercy not only protects us, but strengthens our souls against the temptations of the evil one. But let us not forget that envy can also affect ourselves. When we find ourselves envying others, we are allowing the devil to take root in our hearts. This seemingly harmless sin first hurts us and then others. We must constantly watch our thoughts and ask God to purify our hearts so that we can see the good in others and thank the Lord for the blessings in our lives. Another sign of the devil's action is our inability to forgive. Forgiveness is essential for living a full Christian life free from resentment. Ephesians 4.32 urges us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. When we cannot forgive, we are slaves to resentment and open the door to the evil one. Turning to Christ and practicing forgiveness, even when it seems impossible, frees us from the chains of resentment and brings us closer to the healing and saving love. A third sign of the devil's action is the distancing from God. When we feel distant from him and cannot understand why he seems not to listen to us, we are falling into one of the devil's most subtle traps. As Peter tells us, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. To avoid this, we must daily examine our actions, become aware of what we do, and align our thoughts and actions with God's will. Prayer and meditation on the Word of God are essential tools to remain vigilant and resist the temptations of the evil one. The subtle action of the devil is not limited to feelings of envy, jealousy, and lack of forgiveness. He is a master at using every possible human weakness for his malevolent purposes. Another tool Satan frequently uses is division. We know well how much Jesus prayed for the unity of his disciples, saying in John 17, 21, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Division among believers, within families and communities, is a clear sign of the devil's hand at work. Satan seeks to sow discord, misunderstandings, and strife wherever he can, because he knows that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yet, division is not the only way the devil seeks to destabilize believers. He knows well how to exploit our fears and insecurities. When we feel overwhelmed by anxiety, worry, 
and doubt, we often forget to turn to God. Fear can paralyze our faith, as we see when the disciples were frightened during the storm on the sea, and Jesus rebuked them for their lack of faith, Matthew 8:26. The devil exploits these emotions to draw us away from trust in God, making us believe that we are alone in our struggles. Scripture teaches us that the devil is also the great accuser. In Revelation 12.10, he is described as the one who accuses our brothers and sisters before God day and night. How many times do we feel crushed by guilt, unworthy of God's love, convinced that our sins are too great to be forgiven? This is the devil whispering his lies attempting to make us lose hope and trust in God's infinite mercy. It is important to remember that the devil's action, though aimed at offending God and harming man, is nevertheless controlled by divine power, which uses it to exercise man in virtue and thus increase the splendor of divine glory. The devil does not harm man as much as he would like, but only as far as divine providence allows him to test man in virtue and lead him to the very salvation the devil does not want. The devil enjoys greater freedom to harm if it is man himself who through his sin gives him the space to act. When we face temptations and trials, we must remember that our Heavenly Father is always in control. Even when it seems that the darkness is overwhelming us, God is with us and guides us through every difficulty. Faith in Christ is our anchor of salvation and prayer is our shield. As Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6, 11, 18, we must put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our battle against him is not fought with physical strength, but with faith, prayer, and a life lived in holiness. We must be aware that every time we allow envy, lack of forgiveness, or distancing from God to take hold, we are giving the evil one an opportunity to act in our lives. But we are not alone in this battle. The Lord is always with us, guiding us, and showing us the right actions to take. The Bible provides us with the necessary weapons to fight against the devil's schemes. To fully understand the scope of our struggle, we must consider the three sources of temptation to sin, the flesh, the world, and the devil. The temptation of the flesh comes from ourselves, from our vices and weaknesses. Sins like gluttony or lust are tied to the body, while pride, envy, lying, and hypocrisy are connected to the psycho-spiritual life. The temptation of the world comes from other men, from the human environment in which we live, from our declared enemies or false friends. These can lead us to sin through the allure of pleasures, honors, riches, and human glory. There are also those who oppress us, provoke us, and torment us, making the practice of virtue difficult. The temptation of the devil is not easy to recognize, but Holy Scripture explicitly commands us to guard against diabolic temptations and to remain vigilant. The kingdom of darkness of the devil is the establishment in our world of an anti-church, a kingdom of lies, immorality, and atheism. The devil uses political, economic, social, and cultural instruments and structures to keep humanity under his sway, preventing large masses of people from knowing the truth, living according to the right moral law, and knowing and worshiping God and his son Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for our salvation. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to constantly watch over your hearts and minds, pray incessantly, Stand firm in faith and seek the company of the saints. Remember the words of Jesus. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. With Christ by our side, we can overcome any battle, even against the most subtle schemes of the evil one. Let us pray that the Lord gives us the strength to resist temptations, to forgive those who have wronged us, and to remain always close to Him. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten and guide us, so that we can recognize the devil's action in our lives and repel it with the power of prayer and faith. And above all, let us always remember that we are children of God, loved and protected by a Father who never abandons us. Before concluding, let us take a minute to banish every sign of the evil one from our lives, 
asking Saint Michael the Archangel, Prince of the Heavenly Host, to defend us. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us know in the comments what you think and if this message has been helpful to you. If you have not done so yet, don't forget to join our prayer group to not miss new videos and become part of our community of faith. May the Lord bless and protect us all, making us strong in faith and guarding us from evil.